My name is Dan Upton. Today I'm going to talk to you about the rise of imports. First, before we can talk about the rise of them, I'm going to talk about the very first step, how it, came to, how it kind of started all up. Back in 1949, the very first import ever sold in America was the Volkswagen Beetle. And a lot of automotive, like a lot of the big three kind of shrugged this off as, hey, this is in the market, they're not going to have a threat in us, nothing bad is going to come out of this. It was only in 1950, only about 20,000 were sold. But this completely changed by the 70s. Over 2 million units were sold. And I'm going to tell you guys why. So the main reason this happened was the 1973 deal crisis. You know, there was an embargo on oil, gas prices shot through the roof, and the automotive industry, a lot of American-based ones were, hey, you know, we want these big block Chevys, we want all this power, all these beautiful muscle cars, that kind of thing. They didn't really think about that. So the imports were lighter, had better fuel economy, and overall just kind of fit a little better into the market at the time. So how did this end up hurting the big three? A lot of it was they were trying to compete with these little automotive companies or these little imports. And they're like, we gotta find a way to do this. So they rushed production. They were making cars quickly, they're making them kind of, you know, kind of cutting corners like they did with Pinto. I mean if you got rear end in a Pinto, it exploded. And I believe there was a it was like what, a 10 cent part or something silly like that, or they just wanted to get it out, get it done. And this really hurt the reputation of a lot of the big threes. But at the same time, they actually decided to work with some other foreign companies. Like they kind of combined it. And that kind of you know, gave rise to Diamond Star Motors and a few other small ones. I chose to focus on this one because I just thought it was kind of interesting. No one in the right mind would think Chrysler and Mitsubishi would join together. Like, you know, and they ended up making very iconic cars, just completely changed the car culture. You know, gave it a rise to the imports, all the other stuff, all the civics, all those goofy little neon lights you see everywhere. Like down the years, it really gave rise to a whole other aspect of the car. Personally, for the future, I think it's really interesting how we see Chevy, Ford, all these companies dropping all their cars, and they're focusing on automobile, you know, SUVs, trucks, and everything else. So I think going down in the future, when it comes to it, you're just gonna have to go buy like a Honda Civic or a Ford, because of, you know, all these American companies aren't making cars anymore. They're just making SUVs and trucks. So I think that's kind of interesting that they went from making all these small cars to like now they're just gonna dump it everything. And imports are kind of gonna, you know, they're gonna take over that market. So just to recap of what we talked about today, why it happened, how it hurt the big three, and how it may influence the future. I mean, personally, I think it's just going to bring out see F-150s everywhere, and you aren't going to see a Taurus anymore, but you're going to see a Civic. You know, it's just going to be that weird divide. You guys have any questions about anything? That's really quick. Cool.